All right, Ben, let's talk NBA playoffs, NBA finals, and our biggest takeaways from it. Um, I'm going to start out, my, I think my biggest takeaway, looking at the NBA playoffs as a whole, is we're kind of turning the page from the old talent, the old familiar faces, and starting to get to the new familiar faces, the younger faces. And this playoffs was interesting because we had no LeBron for a little, LeBron early, but not towards the late. Steph was out of the playoffs, no Giannis because he was injured. So you started to see the emergence of some young guys, Luka Doncic. I think the biggest one standout, though, would probably be Anthony Edwards and what we saw in that Denver series, the comeback and the upset that they had in that second round. But I love seeing the emergence and what you you saw with Tatum and Brown and to get the way all the way to the NBA championship and win and, and finally see those two and the cohesion from that side, what you saw from the Knicks and Jalen Brunson and what they can build there. The Pacers make it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals, I think is a plus with Tyrese Halliburton. And, and look, they don't have a lot of scoring there, but maybe that's a team that can emerge and compete against the Celtics. But another takeaway of mine, too, I just think we all kind of overlooked the Celtics the entire year. It was like in college basketball with UConn on how, oh, I think this team could beat them. We kind of made cases for ourselves to be optimistic that other teams would win. But in reality, it was UConn. Same thing for here. We made cases that the Mavs were going to beat the Celtics. We made cases that maybe you know the Knicks got to the, the Eastern Conference Finals against the Celtics that they would win. But it was always the Celtics, the best roster, the best starting five, and they're currently the odds on favor to win it again next year so those are my take my biggest takeaways what would you say your biggest takeaways from the finals and playoffs are two things i've been a firm believer of you can't win a championship if you don't have a superstar player i do believe the boston celtics did that this year i've always said you need a guy that's going to be able to get you a bucket or get you a stop right on a dime and for years past that's been the case whether it's been Giannis, whether it's been nicole Jokic, whether it's been lebron whether it's been steph curry or kevin durant for the warriors for so long that isn't the case. The Boston Celtics did never needed that guy. They just blew out teams. I thought the Dallas Mavericks were going to be better for this matchup. They just weren't. They were bullied the entire time by, from the Boston Celtics. And credit to them for building a team that I believe had two super, had two star players in Jalen Brown and, and Jason Tatum. These are two 8-10 to 10 players in the NBA if you were to rank them. And then... You have a plethora of other guys. This has been the first time, and I believe a few years, where depth actually mattered. And yeah, they got some breaks, some injury luck, whatever. This team reminds me a lot of the 2022 Golden State Warriors and the 2019 Toronto Raptors, where they had some scheduling breaks, they had some injury luck, Hmm. and they capitalized. And that's the biggest thing. And then my second takeaway was... Man, the NBA is in some bad hands. I know people like to say, you know, Jason Tatum, John Morant. You can even throw Devin Booker in that mix if you want to. The NBA has done a really poor job of marketing their next up superstars. They keep on putting Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, LeBron James in the biggest moments, in the biggest nights, on the biggest television broadcasts, where I believe a lot of people have not gotten exposed to the Anthony Edwardses, the John Morants, and that's why you see some of the ratings decline. Mm. I It continues to go to, I'm not sure the NBA is prepared for a LeBron James list, Kevin Durant list, Stephen Curry NBA. I know we've said who's the next superstar player. It could be Anthony Edwards. We're not too sure who it is right now. I'd still pick Luka Doncic there, but is America going to take mm. a guy that isn't technically their own? So uh, I, you see the ratings kind of decline a bit, and I wonder how much the NBA is prepared for the next generation of superstars. So that was another take of mine. No, there. it's a good point, too, and a rattle off of that. You look at the, the NBA playoffs, and it may, it may be what you said of them marketing – Jokic and some of these older players too. It may have affected the MVP voting. It may have vo- impacted some other ones because you got a lot of voters out there that haven't watched the SGAs of the world, haven't watched the Anthony Edwards. And no offense to them, it's just the smaller markets of Minnesota and Oklahoma City versus the markets of LA, New York, and Philly, if that makes sense. So I, I think for the NBA, like you said, kind of tough hands. I also think another tough hands too. Can we get some talent in the Eastern Conference for next season? Please. <laughs> Can everyone just from the Western Conference, all the super superstars and stuff move east because you look at the odds next year ben celtics plus 300 nuggets plus 750 timberwolves plus 850 then you got the bucks at plus 900 after that sixers knicks eh, okay but a lot of western conference teams and for us being covering the suns and stuff this western conference next year is going to be even more loaded and you've got john Morant coming back what are the houston rockets going to build they've got a young team what are the jazz i know that's kind of the younger 
tier of the Western Conference, but then you start to make your way up. OKC looks like a dominant team than what they did a couple years ago with all these draft picks and, and with what the trade happened with Alex Caruso. And then you got the Mavs, the T-Wolves, the Nuggets who are going to come back with vengeance. I just hope for the Suns, their biggest thing is that talent moves east instead of east to west. Yeah, there's a lot of teams in the east that I think I still would attest that the New York Knicks would have given the Boston Celtics a real run for the I money. agree, if when they, healthy. If they had you know, even half their guys healthy. The problem is, is Tibbs likes to play guys into the ground all year, and then they wonder why no one's ever healthy for the end of the season. So uh, the Knicks I really like, and we'll see if they're able to get that next guy next to Jalen Brunson because Jalen Brunson's a small dude, and it really, you know, I wonder if he's able to carry a team given his frame and stature, and I think that's a real thing. Outside of Steph Curry, there's not a lot of small guys running the NBA. Uh, so I really like the Knicks next year, who I kind of bought into later. Uh, I'll never buy into the 76ers and Joel Embiid. Mm. So outside of that, the Eastern Conference has a, a severe amount of catching up to do. Maybe the the uh, Miami Heat finally get their, their white whale, but we'll see how that goes. Right now, it really is the Celtics and everyone else. So let me ask you this question, and then we'll put a bow on the NBA discussion. Which team right now, in their current situation, if you had a rank, so we got three teams about the list. One being the least troubling, they're in a they're in a good situation. They can make it work. Three, it's panic mode. Suns, Lakers, Clippers, and I only mentioned those three teams because during the time where they were creating a super team, teams like the Thunder, T Wolves, and Mavs were forming for long term sustainability. Lakers get their guy in J.J. Reddick. Clippers right now, they got Ty Lue, but the question marks with Paul George, they've got Kawhi there, and the Suns with the new head coach in Budenholzer and what they have with Kevin Durant, Beal, and Booker. If you had to kind of rank, one being they're in a good situation, three being it's panic mode, Suns, Lakers, Clippers, where would you go on that? Yeah, the Suns are in the worst position. That That's just, it's tough, but it's true. They're in the second ta- tax apron where there are so many rules to it that I thought I knew all of them and then until I found out that they can't get Lonzo Ball and I <laughs> sounded like a casual on air. Uh, the second rank there would be the Clippers. I'm sorry, yeah, the Los Angeles Clippers. They're superstars or they're stars, Kawhi Leonard and company. They're just not reliable enough. They can't spend a ton of money. They do have assets to trade, uh, but the Clippers still in a decent spot as well. And then the Los Angeles Lakers. They do have a lot of wiggle room. They've got guys they can trade, and they have key pieces that people want. Maybe they they get rid of an uh, an Austin Reeves for a real star player, but if I was ranking those, Suns are in the worst position. Mm. Being in the second tax apron, you are really hamstrung. Clippers at two, Lakers at one. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the Lakers and a guy that they really want, too, and a guy that wants to be there. Based on that cryptic tweet he had when J.J. Redick was hired, Trey Young, a name to look out for. Austin Reeves, really hot tomorrow. Like you mentioned, could be on the trade block. Well, we're flipping the ties next segment. We're going to talk football, NFL football. What teams do we think are the most overrated? What teams are the most underrated? We're going to look at the NFL win totals for this upcoming season. That's coming up next. Listen to Take the Points, Fox Sports 910.